All right, all right, all right, all right. It was good. Some hazelnut coffee. Start the day off right in this bag. I have the new 35 millimeter to my collection. However, before we get into the contents of this bag, I wanna quickly go over the five options that are available for me as a Sony shooter. This video is gonna be way longer than it needs to be. I could have just been like, yep, yeah, what do you think I got? Here it is. But I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper and kind of talk about the reasons why I decided to go with it and why I slashed out certain options. I'm gonna leave Samyang and Rokinon out of this just because they're not good lenses. Not for me anyway, not bashing on anyone that has them. They just don't really suit me. So that leaves the 35 millimeter f2.8, which I'm also going to immediately cross off the list because f2.8 for a prime lens is absolutely unacceptable. Well, there's two main reasons that I like primes and it's gonna fulfill most people's reasons that they like primes. You're gonna be faster than your zooms. You're gonna have 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 lenses. It's the main reason why most people get primes. My main reason for liking primes so much is because when you're investing more money into a prime lens or even just in general getting a prime lens, that focal length is going to be a lot more solid in terms of less chromatic aberrations, less distortions and less imperfections and idiosyncrasies that you would find at that focal length on a zoom lens, even on a good one. So that leaves four options left. There's the 35 millimeter F1.4 Distagon from Sony. There is the newly released 35 millimeter F1.8. There's Sigma's fantastic 35 millimeter F1.4 and their Sigma 35 millimeter F1.2 that was just released in July. When Sigma released the 35 millimeter F1.4 art lens, that was released in 2012. And then basically they released the same lens, but with a native E-mount for the Sony instead of having to use an adapter. They did release a firmware update on it this year, which drastically improved its performance. However, overall, the lens design is based on a seven year old design, which to me is kind of Mm, I, I get a little nervous around older lenses. And then there is Sony's 35 millimeter Distagon lens. That one is also an older lens, but it's 2015, so it's not as bad. However, it does suffer from a quality control issue. And then you have the Thule, <laughs> Thule, is that even a word? Then you have the two newly released 35 millimeters for the Sony system, and that is Sony's 35 millimeter F1.8 which complements the 85 millimeter F1.8 and the 50 millimeter F1.8 quite nicely. So anybody with, that has these two lenses already can complete their holy trinity of primes. And then there is Sigma's newly released 35 millimeter F1.2. F1.2 is nice, but I don't need that kind of low light performance. It's a useless depth of field in my opinion. It's way too thin. You would need a subject that lays flat towards you and then getting the depth of field. I don't have a use for it. I'm on the a7 III, which has a back illuminated sensor. The low light performance is already good, so I don't need f1.2 for that purpose. The Sigma 35 f1.4, while it is cost effective compared to Sony's 35 1.4, I really don't want to use any Sigma lenses just because they aren't truly native to the Sony system and they aren't going to perform as well with their video autofocus. Yes, I try to use manual focus for the most part, but there are times where I can't rely on manual focus, especially if I'm doing any of my car videos and I'm hanging out of a car, I have to make sure that I'm getting the shot. But thankfully I can depend on my Sony and its lenses to complete that shot. I've never had a problem with Sony's autofocus. I've never really had it hunt around on me or anything like that. It's made itself dependable for me. I know some people may have qualms with that, it works for me, that's important at the end of the day. So for that reason, I'm not going to be getting any Sigma lenses. That's, that's not what's in this back. So that leaves us with two, two options. Either have the 35 millimeter F1.8 or the 35 millimeter F1.4 Distagon. Let's go ahead and uh, bust this bag open and reveal what is inside of this. The Sony 35 millimeter full frame F1.4 Distagon. Let's go ahead and bust this bad boy open. Oh, it even comes with a certificate of uh, of inspection. And there she is. 
full metal construction, nice clicky aperture ring. It's very solid and it, and, and it doesn't feel too heavy either. It's a pretty good size. This is actually very cold to touch. Let's see how this lens hood looks. And if I am not mistaken, it should fit on there like a glove. Looks good. It's a, actually a metal lens hood and then it has uh, the plastic tulips on the front. It'd be ashamed if I dropped it. It's that thumbnail right there. So yeah, so why why did I pick the 35mm f1.4 Distagon? In 2019, with a quality control issue, there's cheaper alternatives. Why? The Sigmas don't really do me good for video autofocus, but I still could have gotten the 35mm f1.8. Why did I go with the 35mm f1.4? 35mm f1.4, it's gonna get me that dreamy background. Um, I definitely wanted something with a little bit more weight to it, something with a faster aperture than just 1.4 or 1.8. Um, just to really, really get that. I've, I've played around with 1.4 enough to realize that I definitely want all my primes to be at 1.4 if possible. And the ability, especially under proper lighting, to really pinpoint where you want someone's eyes to go in the photo. Every single copy that I have tested of this lens, which totals out to six, actually five so far, this will be the sixth one that I test. So far, the five that I have tested were all perfectly fine copies. No crazy shift in decentered focus, nothing wrong with it whatsoever. You know, having that kind of experience and not running into a bad copy made me have a little bit more faith in the gamble of buying one. I actually have a car that I wanna go ahead and shoot this with. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice Mercedes, I'll say that much. Not gonna spoil too much, but definitely be looking out for that in the next video. If you're on the Sony systems, let me know what 35 you have, what you think of it, if you have the 35 millimeter f1.4. I will definitely do a lens test on this and see if I have a good copy, if I don't have a good copy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and be a part of the notification gang. Hop in, watch it, and we can conversate for a little bit. I definitely like communicating with you guys. If you haven't done all that, make sure you do it. Peace out, I'll see you guys in the next video. When Sigma 